Are you looking for professional painting results without a professional price or professional complexity? Well, I have a product for you. What's up you guys, it's Travis with Shop Nation. Today I wanna to talk about finishing. Now if you've watched any of my videos leading up to this one, you know that I generally like finishing, especially painting shop furniture, but I hate the process of doing it. So I invested in a piece of equipment about a year and a half ago that's made my life a lot easier in this department. And that is an airless paint sprayer like this Graco unit you see here. Now why in the heck would you invest in a paint sprayer versus the tried and true brush or roller method? Well, there's really two reasons. The first is the quality of the paint job. You're gonna get a much better finish using the sprayer versus a roller or brush. Now this becomes much more obvious when you're painting very large things like the cabinets behind me. It's usually on the big flat surfaces that you'll see the brush strokes or the roller marks versus the sprayer which gives a uniform appearance. And the second thing and the biggest driver for me to get an airless paint sprayer is time. Now it would be unfair to compare the paint times of the two without factoring in the prep and cleanup time. So let's break that down. Now the prep work that goes into the object you're painting is the same, but the area that you're protecting around the object is a little bit more with the sprayer versus the roller or the brush. And that's because it's easier to confine where the paint may drip with a brush or a roller versus the sprayer. But then you factor in the actual paint time. And of course this varies depending on what you're painting, but in general what I've found is it's about five to 10 times faster to paint with the airless sprayer than it is with a brush or a roller. And this effect is compounded the larger the object is or the more complex the object is. And the cleanup is very minimal. So in some cases you may just throw away the brush or the roller. The cleanup with the sprayer involves cleaning the sprayer as well as cleaning up the additional masking that may have gone into the job. Now when taking all of that into account, you can see that even factoring in setup time and cleanup time, the sprayer is much faster. Now when it came time to pick the make and model of sprayer that best fit my needs, which is basically a pretty low volume of just painting shop equipment, I ended up with the Graco True Coat 360 DS. Now if you watch the cabinet build video series, you know that I use this sprayer to paint all of the cabinets in that entire build, in addition to my workbench and several other projects around my shop. So this is the sprayer that I'm going to be doing the review on today. However, I think it's worth mentioning that with Graco in particular, there's about three classes of sprayers that you can choose to buy. Now the model that I bought, as well as the one just below this, exists in that first group. These are intended for people that are gonna paint anywhere from 15 to 20 gallons or less of paint per year, which I think most of us are probably in that group, and gives you minimal, if any, adjustment to this pressure at which you're painting. So this DS model that I bought is dual speed, meaning I have two speeds, a high and a low. So I can choose between 900 or 1500 PSI. Now in the second group, just above this one, there is a True Coat 360 VSP, which stands for variable speed. This sprayer is intended for people who paint with 25 gallons or less per year and offers 10 distinct pressures at which you can set your sprayer to, ranging from 500 to 1500 PSI. So you can really fine tune depending on the job and the paint you're using. Another perk of that model over the one that I got is that instead of the 32 ounce paint containers, it uses a 42 ounce paint container, meaning you have to refill less often. And then in the third group above that one is still within the hobby DIY Y group, but it's probably intended for someone who uses it much more often. And that is the Graco Ultra Cordless. And as the name implies, it is battery powered, which is really cool. And it uses the same DeWalt 20 volt lithium ion batteries that you probably already have on hand. The sprayer is built very different than the two classes below it. That sprayer has a higher range of pressures from 500 to 2000 PSI. It has a much more robust tip and pump and it's just generally gonna last a lot longer. But it's about twice the cost as the two classes below it, so I would really only recommend it if you're using it as a business or you're doing a lot of really big paint jobs. And then there's actually a model even above that one, which is the Cordless Ultra Max. And the only difference of that sprayer is you can actually paint in flammable materials. So every other one that I talked about, you cannot paint in flammable materials, that one you can. You pay about a $200 premium to do that, so better be worth it. So depending on where you fall in that range, there really is an option for each, and all of those are actually linked below. And in my experience, the cheapest price tends to be actually Amazon. So if you're interested, go check those out. All right, so onto the tool review. Now, if you've seen any of my tool reviews before, you know that I'm a big believer in actually using the equipment and then giving you my input on it. You're never gonna see me unbox something and give you an opinion. This is no different. I have used this sprayer a lot over the past year and a half, and I've had good experiences and bad experiences. So I feel like I'm in a good place to tell you exactly what I think. And I'll do that by telling you the top three things that I like and that I don't like about this product. First thing that I like is how easy it is to use. Now before buying a paint sprayer, I gotta admit, I was a little intimidated by the thought of loading, unloading, cleaning, maintaining. I thought there was much more to it than there actually is. And with some models there might be, but this one is very easy. Getting started takes about two minutes. 
That involves first pouring paint into the container, bleeding that container of air, flipping the sprayer over and priming the pump, and then painting. It's really that simple. And then cleanup is more or less just a reverse of that order, except that you're using the solvent that goes with the paint you're using. So if you're using an oil-based paint, you'd use mineral spirits to clean it. Or in my case, I tend to use a lot of latex paint, so that's a water-based cleaning solution. In total, cleaning takes about 15 minutes. The second thing that I like is the value. Now, yes, the airless paint sprayer is gonna be quite a bit more expensive than a single brush or a roller, but when you factor in how many paint jobs you get out of it, the cost per paint job is actually pretty low. If you were to assign a value to your time, that's when the value starts to really increase. Painting is so much more approachable now, knowing that I can do it so much faster than I could with a brush or roller. So for me, the value is huge. And the third thing that I like most about this thing is its reliability. So the model that I have is not the top of the line model, but it's really robust. I'll be honest, I don't take the best care of it. There are steps I should take to preserve it between paint jobs, and it just keeps working. Yes, I have the occasional clog and I have to clear them, but even that is not very hard, and then it works perfect. So for me, a year and a half of use, painting a lot of stuff around my shop, the reliability is top notch. All right, so now let's talk about the three things that I don't like about it so much. The first is the limited capacity of the container of paint. Now with these types of systems, use a little disposable bladder of paint. Now in the case of the one that I have, it's a 32 ounce volume. As mentioned, the one just above this is a 42 ounce, so it's a little bit better, but in general, it's pretty small. So if you're painting a large object, this means you're gonna have to stop and refill that container, in some cases, several times. And it's not that it takes that long, it just interrupts the process. Now, if I had to guess, the reason for this is because this is a handheld sprayer where everything is contained in the object you're holding. So if you had a big reservoir of paint, it would make it very heavy and kind of a pain in the butt to use. So 32 ounces is probably a good trade-off between weight and usability. The second thing, and I've only run into this one time, is it tends to overheat if you're using it for a long period of time. When I was painting the upper cabinets that are sitting behind me, the paint sprayer actually overheated and stopped working. Now granted, that was the first time I'd ever used it, so my immediate thought was, what a piece of crap. It turns out though, with extended use, and it says it right in the manual, if it does overheat, you just give it some time to cool off, and then you're back up and painting in about 15 minutes. So if you are gonna paint something very large, even the inside of a room, that's something I would consider. And the third thing, and this honestly is probably my fault for the most part, is that the tips can clog. So I mentioned that there's three classes of these airless paint sprayers, and the one that I own is sort of in the bottom class. Because it's a cheaper sprayer, the tip is mostly plastic with a small metal insert, and I think it just tends to clog a little bit easier, but you can greatly reduce the risk of doing that if you just clean it thoroughly. I probably don't do the best job of cleaning every time, which is why I tend to have clogs. But the clogs are actually pretty easy to remove. You just flip the tip around and blow the paint out the other side. So again, this is probably my fault. Less has to do with the sprayer, but certainly something that I don't like as much. So with all of that being said, what is my final verdict on the Graco Airless Paint Sprayer? I think it's fantastic, and I would urge you to go buy the one that fits your needs the best. And if I were to go back in time a year and a half and purchase this again, I would probably go with the one just above this, which is the Graco True Coat 360 VSP. Again, linked below. Main reason being you can really fine tune for the paint you're using, as well as using the larger capacity paint bags. But those are really honestly kind of nitpicky. This thing has been fantastic. I would also really recommend picking up one of these pop-up spray shelters. They go up quick, they're reusable, and they come in a variety of sizes to best fit your needs. Check out the links below if you're interested. So I hope that review is helpful. If you're on the fence of buying one of these airless paint sprayers but don't want to invest in one of these high-end systems, I really do recommend this line of products. Now, I'm not endorsed by Graco. I'm not paid by them. I'm not connected to them in any way. I just believe in the product, so I want to tell you about it. Now, I have a lot of videos on my channel of me using this sprayer, like the cabinet build, the kid's workbench, the sanding organizer, the shop towel cabinet, the workbench. Most of my projects actually use this sprayer, so if you want to see it in action, go check those videos out. As always, I really appreciate each and every one of you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys on the next project. And as always, continue to pursue shop greatness.